<laughs> Good morning, class. Here we are. I'm going to finish showing you how to paint Dorothy, the gal who um, invented penicillin. And so I just want to say good morning and hope everybody's doing well. We got our second COVID shot with no after effects. So that was exciting because we were kind of worried about the after effects since our friends had had some major after, after effects for a couple of days. So um, we're good to go so far. And I'm gonna switch cameras and we're gonna get started right now. So there, here comes Dorothy and we're also gonna do um, Schindler List, Sky, uh, Arthur, or Oscar Schindler. Okay, here goes. So just a second, we'll change the camera to the H3 Pro Webcam Logitech. Here goes. So here we have the palette. The mouse and Dorothy. Here she is. So as you can see, I'm going to turn off my phone here. Let me turn it off. And here she is. And I think she's looking pretty good, except this side looks a little weird because it's so dark around this part right here. So rather than just scrubbing that out, I think I will just try to put some um, darker value there, just to kind of hide that because see on this side, she has some dark under here too, which could be read as eyelashes, but this reads as too much mascara. <laughs> so we need to fix that. Okay, so I just wanna make sure I'm recording. Yes, good. All right, let's um, make that eye a little darker. So I'm going to use, I always turn my palette the right, the same direction. So the yellows are at the top. And I think you can see everything here. Be able to get the top in there. Um, okay. And I see down here, I've got these nice golds. Her hair looks good. This is the shadowy side. This is the bright side over here. And I want this to stay bright in here because that's a highlight on her hair, which you can see right here. So these highlights are really important. The shadows are really important. And that makes the person look round, makes your head look round. And, and uh, so, the, so it has three dimensionality. Anyway, I like this over here. I just think that looks really nice. I have the light into light and the dark into dark. And when anytime you do that light into light where the light gets lost into the light, the light side of the head gets kind of lost into the light coming in and the dark gets kind of lost into the dark. You, your painting will have an air of mystery, like they're you know, coming just, you know, emerging from this dark background and uh, just coming forward toward you and looking a little mysterious. Okay, so let's get some color on here and let's mix up the gold. And um, I think we'll use this new gamboge here. Okay, and then we'll get some purple into it. So I'll just use my dioxazine purple right here. I don't want to get too much because see, look at that, turn brown, okay. I always know if we had too much complement, we either get gray, brown, or black. So we, we want to keep it yellowy, like it's um, yellow ochre that we, don't, we did not buy. We just made it. And we'll put some of this over here. Actually, I was going to do the, and I want some on her bangs right here because they kind of go over the edge of the, her head. So here we are. Getting some of this color back in here. Trying to repeat this goldy color over in here. And the green is okay. It shows through. That's really cool. It looks good. And her bangs come down over her forehead a little bit. So she doesn't look like she has her hair pulled down too far. I mean, otherwise her, her head would be pulled, her hair would be pulled back too far. And then she would look like she has a rubber band on, which she doesn't. 
There are no rubber bands at this point. I think rubber was invented by them. I'm not sure they made rubber bands for hair yet. Something interesting to look up, I suppose. So I'm looking at her and I see I'm getting some pretty good um, yellowy color there. And actually, you almost hardly add, have to add any purple for here. In fact, I'm not going to add any. I'm just going to put a new gamboge right there because watercolor is transparent. I'll be able to see the purple underneath there without getting it too uh, black or brown, like we just said. And I want some more of this up here so it shows up better. I want to keep that blue there, maybe make it flip up a little bit here and uh, give it some movement, some life to it. I like that. And back there and got our highlight. We can make maybe a couple more strokes of this down in here just to make it blend in a little better with the sunny side. And maybe we'll put a little bit of color right here just to give it a little more life, not too much. Don't want too many stripes, that's the thing. Otherwise, I don't know, it starts looking weird. Too many stripes. Um, so we want kind of chunks of color. And I think this side looks pretty good over here. Maybe it needs a little more yellow. So let's see here. See if we can do something about this. Okay, it's so got a lot of blue in here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's just leave it for now and uh, go on to, like I said, fixing this eye. Um, so let's see. We'll mix up some orange over here. I love this palette. This was such a great palette. I can't believe I discovered it. And of course, you always, if you need extra mixing room, you always have a lid. Look at all this extra mixing room. Just put the lid on and you're ready to mix up some more paint or use it. Okay, let's make some oops, orange over here. Okay, so a little blue. And uh, and we need a little this we need a little red in here just to get some blood into her face. A little more orange. You don't want it to get too brown. Okay, let's just put this over here like this because there's an overhang over your your eyebrow kind of makes a. Um, there's a hole under there called your eye socket. So we just, we're just making this eye, eye socket a little bit darker. And I'm also gonna put it right over the eye. Like that. What are you doing? Yeah, so it's okay. And I'm also gonna put a little bit over here. This becomes a shadow around there. And that eye will just become part of her cheek. In this side of her face, I'm just blending it over. So she'll have just a little bit of color there. And uh, that, that part will just disappear into the background and needs a little more red. So I'm softening the edge so I don't have hard edges. Really important in areas where you don't see hard edges. Uh, to get rid of hard edges. You don't necessarily want hard edges there. I don't like the looks of her lower lip. I think it needs a little more color. So I'm going to put a little more color on her lip. Even though you don't really see it as a shadow showing color, it just feels like it needs some color. So I'm going to put a little more red around her teeth. That'll make her teeth show up better. And under on her lower lip, I, mean, I still want to highlight on her lips. So this will be our highlight right here, which I think looks better now. I don't want to soften it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. 
it's, it's not bad, it's not bad. So I'll, I'll just do this a little more. And maybe some more red around the bottom. This. Light coming from the upper left. Oh, baby, yeah, there we are. <laughs> Looking good. A little darker over here. And I see that there's some dark right in here. Oh, that looks so much more um, fetching. And I also noticed that on this side of her teeth, it's darker in the picture. So, so here's our photo. And over this, on this side over here, it's, it's a little bit darker. So uh, on her teeth, see your teeth right in here? They're darker. It's like from the split in her two front teeth over, it's a little darker. So we will correct that as well. So she doesn't have this, well, I don't know, chiclet type smile, like gum or something. <laughs> It'll look more like teeth. <clears throat> I really like the soft edges we created around her chin and her soft edges on her cheek. Maybe this edge is really too hard right here, but it's kind of hard anyway. Uh, I could probably use, have used a soft edge along here when I look at it. So we might be able to loosen that up, but then we also might ruin it. So um, we just might leave that the way it is. Okay, so let's see. They say you should always have one eye dominant. So this is our dominant eye. And we can always rub out a little bit of this darker color here if we need to. But this eye is in shadow and I'm okay with that. So um, I'm not sure we solved our problem with this dark under here, but I think we can make it work by fixing this shadow a little bit. It's right here. It's darkening that up a little bit. Maybe darkening this a little more, but I don't want to give her make her look like she has a black eye. So we'll let, leave that as it is for now. And uh, maybe make some more corrections later. But I'm liking her hair. I think that's looks pretty good. Uh, I think maybe I'll put it feels like it's not quite finished right in here. So maybe just fix that a little bit. It's a little better. And I think Dorothy's almost done. I think she looks pretty much okay, except for maybe a few things. So let's see here. I think I want a little bit darker eyeliner. Remember, she doesn't have any makeup on, so we're giving her a little, uh, a new look, a re, we call that a redo or um, remake or something like that in the beauty industry. So here we go, put some, a little more mascara here. Get that out there. And uh, what else? Let's see if we can lift out a little bit of this color. We need a paper towel. So. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I'll just lift that a little bit right here. So we can lighten that just a little bit. I'm just going to rub on it with my Skoda brush. Yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? Look at that. It's right under there. And these two highlights feel like they need to make a comeback. So let's see how if we can improve that a little bit by doing this. It's the pro white again. Looks like this. You go in and ask anybody for pro white, and they know exactly what you're talking about when it comes to like Mary Artist. So it has a big P, and it's very white, and it works really well for little little highlights, like you want to put in her eye. Just make this highlight a little bit bigger. These highlights won't be quite as bright, maybe. There, now she looks, I think we brought her eye back to life. <clears throat> okay, 
Let's darken the teeth on this side, and maybe that's going to be done. Because <coughs> we certainly don't want to overwork it, which is easy to do. All right, so with darker teeth. Look. I think she looks pretty good, considering where we were at one time, which was nowhere <laughs> that she uh her looks improved and and I'm gonna call her, I think I'm gonna call her done. I'm not exactly happy with this eye over here. It feels like it maybe needs to be put in a little more shadow. Maybe it's her eyelid. <coughs> uh oh, excuse me, I dropped my brush. Okay, let's see. So Dorothy's one of these kind of people you have to set up for a while. And I think what I need to do is put some more shadow over here on her head. So I'm going to come in here, grab some orange and a little blue and a little red. And put some shadow over here. And what it does, it's going to blend in the side of her face with um, her hair and the shadows over there on that side. And then I'll soften this edge a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, let's see. We need to darken a few things. So we'll darken this area right here. And soften this edge. It has hit such a hard edge. We've got to we have to soften this. Okay, if you go over it too many times, you start lifting off the paint, so you have to watch out for that. I'm going to darken this just a little bit right here. Get just a little bit sharper and including rounding off this point on her chin right here. See how that helped her? Maybe it needs a little more. Yes, that looks better. I'll soften this very carefully. Okay. Yeah, she's still got this uh, eye that's bothering me. So I think I'm going to just put a veil over it. Feels better now already. I think this is just too bright, real right, right there. I don't know, even this feels too bright. And I think what it is, I think it's this one highlight right here. So when this dries out, I'm going to put another highlight over there. Otherwise, she looks like she's looking a little bit cross-eyed. So I think that's going to solve that problem. And let's see what else. I think, I think we're just going to put this one aside now. Or we'll we do something drastic to it and call it pretty good. All right, here's our or here's Oscar. <coughs> So all these paintings that we've done are all copies of somebody else, or you've been copying mine. Uh, the coffee cups are, of course, original, and unless you copied somebody. So um, these uh, can't be sold. They can't be signed by you and called yours because you have to be very, very careful with plagiarism in the industry, and you don't want to be having to put up money for to protect yourself from some lawsuit. So make sure you never copy anybody's photo 
anybody's painting and call it your own. It has to be your photo and it has to be your painting that you copy, your drawing that you copy. It has to be an original from you. You don't copy people anyway and call it your own. I mean, that's just, you know, you can't do that. So, all right, let's um, just remember that. Just make it your own, have it, have it be your own photo. You know. So I'm just covering this up over here. I just want to bring this light around here so it's not half dark and half light. I think that helped. Just going to bring that down here and darken it. And then we'll do a darker side, lighter side on the hat when we get ready. We're going to do it darker under here, under the brim. And this has this thing of uh, print here. You can see this edge of this hat all the way around, which is a nice touch. So I think we'll try to uh, do that and get that going as we go along here. Okay, we've got quite a big bit of contrast between here and here, but I really like the look of Oscar. And remember, it's not going to necessarily look like Oscar. It's going to kind of look like Oscar, maybe. But look how dark his upper lip is. So these darks and lights are good. Usually that's the problem with most paintings. The dark lights aren't any good. They're all, the whole painting ends up looking bland because there's no good darks in there. When I say a dark, I mean the dark has to have a name. It needs to be dark green, dark brown, you know, dark something, dark orange. It ha has to have a name. So um, make sure it has a dark with a name. Otherwise, there's this color I call the purple blue bruise color. And it's just kind of a mass of stuff on your palette and you stick it in there because it looks kind of dark, but the dark doesn't have a name and it ends up, oh gosh, I don't, makes it up making the painting really ugly. So know with that, you know, things that look beautiful. Okay, so now we are going to fix this fellow and make him look good. Let's start with uh, something innocuous like this hat. I like this type highlight that runs all the way around here. It takes a lot of observation and remind me on Friday to talk about contour drawing since this is also a drawing class. I want to make sure I talk about that. Okay, let's define his hat some more here. So we're going to mix up a nice fedora brown. We already have some blue and orange over here anyway. Blue. Add some orange to it. That looks pretty good. And I feel like I'm not using the right brush for carrying. I need to carry this brown all the way here. This brush, which is my Escoda, doesn't carry very much water. And I am missing my brush. I'm missing my mop. The, the missing mop. Where, where did it go? I think I probably moved it over here because I was working on something. Um, let's see. What brush I could use? I'll just get my other mop. Your mop, which is all around here. Back this one. I don't like that one either. Here it is. Here's my little mop. Where'd my, where'd my brush go? It's always the mystery. Where did the brush go? Okay. This is a good mop. It's this one. See, it has the um, wire wrapped around there. Which the other one didn't have wire, it just had a metal ferrule. That's called the ferrule. <coughs> Official name. <laughs> okay, I want it to look brown. All right. Let's see here now. It's okay, here we go. Putting it down, picking it up and putting it down. Going to leave this little edge. 
kind of here like this. And then I want to come in next to his face. Eventually, I'm going to, because I've got to soften this edge onto his face. And I'm going to come around his ear, and I've got to get this color down fast before it gets hard edges on it. Putting some more color there because when I soften the edge, I want it to um, be wet enough to move. If it gets too dry, then it won't soften very well. I don't want it back. I don't want to edge down here. That little edge we're trying to create here. So I keep looking back and forth to my my uh, Oscar photo, the actual portrait of him, photo portrait. And I'm going to soften this edge in about two seconds. Okay, it goes. Uh oh. Okay, I'm dabbing it over here on my toilet paper wrapped with a paper towel. That's what I dab my, my brush on. I don't think I made that very clear, but that's what that's all about. I'm just softening the back edge of this hat. And then I'm going, I don't want this to look brown over here. So I'm just going to bring this down and add a little water. And then I'm not going to touch that area again because it will start lifting the color. Once it's wet, the color begins to lift easily. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> so. I'll probably make a background right there, but okay. Maybe not. Sometimes I paint with my fingers. Okay, now we can put this hat band in right here. As long as we stay away from this edge over here. Oops, I've got to wash soften this edge right here. Almost forgot. This edge on his face. And we'll fix his eyes pretty soon. So he has eye better looking eyes. Put in his hair. Right in here. I can see this is coming down, so we're just putting it's a little more water, dry, pretty dry brush, but a wet edge, wet, wet enough to wet the paper. <laughs> and we'll put it, start putting in his hat, the rest of his hat. I kind of like the idea of a blue hat band, but we'll just stick to our guns here and make it just a very dark brown. Maybe just dull down a little bit. Don't want something too bright over there. Although he's going to have a bright tie. So let's just make it kind of a midnight blue with a touch of orange. So I'm going to turn it upside down. Put his hat band in so I can see what I'm doing. The number one reason, you don't want to just paint blind. hope you hit the spot. It's okay to turn your painting upside down. You just have to pay attention to what you're doing upside down, because you are upside down. He's getting confused. Because you're upside down. Well, it sounds disconcerting, but it works. It works fine. Okay, there's a nice velvet hat band, and I think we could even, but uh, we won't. We'll just leave that like that. I think I'm just going to blend it in with some more um, hat color. So I've got some more brown. I want dark brown on the side and light brown on the other. Okay, there's some brown. I'm dabbing off my brush a little bit. And 
And I see a little reflective vinyl on the top of this headband too. I'm gonna get rid of it on the exact edge over here. It's not necessary. Okay, so there you go. We had a pretty good um, first passage at it. And then we'll just come across here with some more orangey brown. Like that, just blend this right in. Which, then we need our, still need to keep our edge right along here. And we're gonna put it right down here. And then make an edge right here. And then we'll just put this right up here like this. We turn it around. We'll put this, have this come over here like this. And I'm just doing this with water now. That's all that is, water. And because it's going to show underneath, this little blue shadow will show up from underneath. It's going to end up okay. I want to soften this edge back here. So I'm going to do it with, um, I'm just going to put a blue back here. I'm going to gray, but I can just blend this right into, see this, sharpen this up a little bit, put this right up next to it, and kind of soften that into the background. So you have the dark into dark and light into light effect. Soften those edges. We'll put a little up in this corner. All right. That's good enough. Okay, so all the edges are softened. Now, let's see. I think we can probably put in the rest of his hair now. Might get a little gray here. You can tell from here. So this is just gray. This gray I mixed up over here. Can you see that? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Then, um, let's just say he has gray, brownish hair probably. Blue and orange, blue and orange, over and over, <laughs> works well. So I'm just giving him some hair over here. When, I don't want it to be a hard line, I want it to be more of a soft line. And then his ear comes out of his hair. So his ear is pretty clear. And that all kind of blends together. I'm gonna put some red in this, just see what happens. You can always get rid of it. It doesn't work. You just toss that out. So then I'm gonna mix some gray into these this lipstick color, lip color. And I'll put on his lips. I'm gonna to try to make him look like his lips. So I'm looking over here and it goes up right here. It's kind of it's like a thicker lip over here. That's because it's foreshortened. Foreshortened means I'm looking at it from the side. I'm look, not looking at it straight on. So there, therefore, it's not as wide as this other side over here, which I'm, because of my angle, see the head's turned away from me. So that's why I don't see this lip over here, because that lip is going whoop around the corner um, of his head, because his head is, not flat. His face is, he does not have a flat face. And then his lip kind of has these little marks that come around like that, like the crease. Now it's, he kind of looks, we, we got this a little deep. So because of that, he doesn't look quite like the photo, but it's close enough. And 
I, I just need to put a little bit of line here. So I just did it as dots. Okay, let's see. This is a little bit darker right in here. And then this, these no, nostrils were a little darker. So it's just this reddish color. So it should look okay. And then this comes over here. And this then comes up here and right into his nostril because that's the bottom of his nose. So it needs some shadow. Comes across here like that. So you just figure out which way the lines and the shadows go. And um, the more you do it, the better of an observer you become. <clears throat> there. So now we're getting somewhere. Let's sharpen up his ear just a little bit. Not much. A little whiter right here. All these thick and thin lines are really important so you don't have the same width of line everywhere. It's good to have a variety of line. And there's some shadow that comes like this. That makes a little dip right there in his ear. And let's give him some eyebrows. So his face begins to take on some personality. Let's see. Okay, so we're, we're kind of mixing up a, a grayish, darkish gray for his little eyebrow hairs here. So we don't want it to look too smooth. And he's got this nice fold in his eye. And this is quite dark under here too, so. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, it'll look okay once we get everything finished, okay? So we'll just get his, his eye. Okay, he's got a dark line right here. Just stay, take it easy. <laughs> I'm talking to myself, okay? Let's take it easy, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> all right, then he's got some dark under here. So we gotta make sure we get some color in here. We don't just want all, all blackish, brownish for his eyebrows. And remember what we're doing here. Okay, so here we go. Down this way. And then it's kind of stopped right here and comes down this way. I'm just observe, you know, following exactly what I observe, not what I not what I know, but what I observe. It's a big difference. If you know something is one way, you know the the roof have parallel lines or built parallel, but because of perspective, they don't end up looking that way. They don't end up looking pro, uh, parallel. I'm talking about roof lines here. So his nose comes up as a little peak up and then it's a little bit darker right here. Okay, and then he's got a dark pupil right here. That helps. We'll put the screen on again for him. And uh, he's looking, he's looking handsome. All right, let's get some blood and uh, more red in this color. And get this red, red part in his eye right here. It's not like that. I would have imagined Arthur or Oscar Schindler was always running a little bit scared trying to take care of his Jews that worked for him in his factory, his enamel factory that he had. And somehow that enamel factory made stuff for munitions. I'm not sure how that works. Maybe um, spark plug type things. You think about spark plugs, they have that enamel uh, ceramic part on the spark plugs. 
Have you ever observed a spark plug? <laughs> yep. So just putting in the darks where this eye is, forming the eye. And this part of the eyelid covers part of the iris, is green iris. We decided to give them green eyes. I'm really not quite sure. They look hazel anyway. And we need another pupil. The pupil doesn't seem to be in the middle of his eye because of foreshortening this time. It's over to one side, but then that looks not so good either. So I'm just going to bring a dark over this way. All right, so he's looking pretty good. He's got a decent looking hat. Up, and he's got some light coming in here. I like that look on right there where the light gets lost in the, the uh, dark of his hat gets lost in the light coming in from the side. That's exactly what's cool. So let's get his eyes to find a little more. You'll notice around this pupil is a dark edge. Of course, a pupil is just a hole that lets in the light so you can see. It goes back to your optic nerve, which goes into your brain and gets translated into signals. And it's just a miraculous thing, the eye. In fact, Darwin said the thought of the eye evolving made him shudder, made him tremble. And I thought, is that really true? So I went and found it. Uh, the Darwin's book, Origin of the Species, and I found the page, and sure enough, he then made up a story about how he thought, uh, you know, the eye might have evolved from a patch of, a light-sensitive patch, which is whatever, you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's see here. So we've got, we're getting there. All right. Got some dark under here. He's got dark over there. Got a little dark patch here that shows up over here. Let's work on his eye. So we're going to make some greenish eyes. I'm just using some sap green, mixing it into this grayish color I've got going. So his eye doesn't turn out to be brilliant, brilliantly bright and too green. So I'm just being really careful over here, mixing into this area. So it keeps this green look, but doesn't get too um, too bright. Well, he was supposed to be a ladies' man, and I can see that he's starting to get that look in his eye <laughs> now. I'm working on him, and I'm staying avoiding this lower eyelash, batch of eyelashes, because if you look at your own eye between your eyelashes and your actual eyeball, there's um, a skin area where there's not any eyelashes. Because if your eyelashes touched your actual eyeball, it would really irritate your eye very badly. So this is for the dark side of his eye, and he's got light coming in from the left. And this one has light coming in from the right, which is interesting. So this comes across here like this, and it's in shadow from his upper lid right here. Did you see that? That shadow I just put from here, from here to here on his eye, on the iris of his eye is really an important shadow. Well, he definitely has that look, doesn't he? Or by a looker. So let's see, this doesn't look quite right. This dark, this dark right here comes down a little further. I, got, I think his eyelash, eye, eyebrow is too high. Well, this guy with a heavy, Heavy eyebrows. This is too light over here. Needs a little more shadow, seems like. Because the whole upper forehead needs more shadow, doesn't it? Okay, let's try that. A so whole upper shadow. Upper forehead needs more shadow. 
let's do this. Let's see how this looks. Mixing up a darker orange, a little bit of red. And we're just going to put a shadow across here. I'm, I'm going to have a little more blue. It's a little more shadowy. You can just come right up and do his forehead, and then we'll soften this edge. And it comes right down here across this, and then it comes right around this eye and makes a dark edge next to this his nose. It kind of surrounds this whole eyeball, and down this way. On his cheek, and you want you to end up doing is basically sculpting this guy. I just took soften the edge so it goes back into the background a little, and he's looking pretty, pretty good. Ah, uh, let's see. Not happy with this. It's too hard of an edge. So let's just. It just needs to be blended in with a little more shadowy color. It's looking better already. And then we'll soften this edge really quickly. And there he's pretty well sculpted. And he looks very dapper and quite actually quite handsome. Put this a little darker under here. And swapping this edge and into the background. Well, that was complicated. So <laughs> anyway, there we are. That's it. And this is a little bit too uniform of the line. So I'm going to break it up a little bit. So I'm just doing some dark brownish color and just break this line up a little bit. Like so. It just was so uniform. We just want a suggestion of a highlight there. So that looks a little better. Now I need to work a little someone is tie and uh, this side looks pretty good i'm pretty happy with it Our, his dominant eye is definitely over here let's put just a little shadow right here like this he's an older man he has you know a little bit of a bag under his eye and then we've got this little piece right here as well And this eye has a little bit of a little bit of shadow under here, right to there. A little shadow around his nose. On this eyelid right there. And on this eyelid right here. And that should set his eye back into its socket a little better. Soften this edge right here. And this edge over here. That it's always darker when you first put it down and don't let that freak you out. <laughs> okay, here's a little darker right here under his nose. So his nose is defined a little better. There's a, a little bit of shadow that comes down this way. Let's give it a little brush like that. And this is a little bit of shadow right here. Yeah, it looks a little kissy lips, but uh, get rid of some of that. All right, it needs something. So I've just got some green here. I'm just going to put this out. I'm going to put it out here. See, it looks a little kissy lips. So let's extend his lip a little bit. 
there now it's not quite so he needs a little more serious look but he's good enough i think <laughs> okay let's get this going I'm just doing in the corner of his mouth here. He's got some kissy look out here. Actually, he gets rid of his puckered, puckered look. So I don't want him to have a puck, puckered look like he's going to kiss somebody. Okay. All right. I like his eyes. Uh, there's some little green going out into his whites, but you don't even notice that. So it's okay. I don't want to get it too detailed. I don't want to use too many dark lines. I like the way he looks. I think this edge is too sharp. I'm going to soften it right in here. Blotting it just a little bit. Just giving it not quite such a sharp cut out look. And this, these are called accidentals when you make a little spot. That, where the light can come in. You can tell, barely tell I did anything. But I did do something. Okay, now he's gonna, he looks like he has a really long neck because I didn't keep this dry in here. I should have kept it dry on his shirt edge. So he's gonna be like, this and put this row white on here really delicately so that I want it to go around his neck. And I just want this to be not so orange. And then this needs to be not quite so gray, but I'm not going to worry about this gray because I can show this, uh, get rid of this gray look just by making a dark shadow in here, darker, a little bit darker shadow which you can see in the painting or the photo there's this dark shadow right here and it has a soft edge next to his shirt collar so that'll be easy to do because there's already a soft edge built in here from where it ran so let's just put this here so here's my edge and I also, if you can't find any pro, pro white, titanium white, which is a watercolor. I mean, this is watercolor too, this pro white, but uh, titanium white works as a, a very good white as well. I have one famous person that we had at WSO te to teach us a national watercolorist. She uses a lot of titanium white. She doesn't use any pro white uses a lot of titanium white in her paintings and they she puts a lot of things behind a veil a thin veil of white it's really good okay there's a little bit of white oops and if you have to put more on it's it's okay you can put more on it covers really well this pro white stuff Okay, he's beginning to get more of a necktie. And he doesn't look like he has such a long, thin neck anymore. He looks quite handsome. I think he definitely looks human. So that, <laughs> that was one of our goals, to make him look human. Maybe he could use more work, and we could work on him all day, you know? But we just want somebody that looks, somebody that looks human. Okay, let's uh, let's make some shadow in his uh, suit here. <coughs> okay, let's soften this edge. You know, and you can build it back up again until it looks right in your in your book, your paint book, how you want it to look. I just add a little more gray in here.
All right, let's um, put some, I'm just mixing it into this flesh color because it's orange. And I'm going to put it somewhere. I think I'll put it, I'll get out my brush that carries a lot of water <laughs> on my mop. And put it along the sides of his coat and set this part back a little more because the lapel comes forward, right? That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn this upside down and let it run back into here. Okay, that looks soft, that looks good. We'll do the same thing over here. Need a little more blue. Definitely want it to look gray. Okay, we'll do the same thing on this side. This is the shadowy side, so it can stand a little more, maybe. A little more dark, a little more blue, blue gray. Right here is the lapel. And then we're going to let it go right into the background by just softening this edge. There we go. This is right side up. This is his face. Needs to come across this way. So I've got a little pinky color here. And I'm going to just put that right across here under his hat to make this darker up here. So it's just plain old Quinacridon Rose coming right over his eyebrow, and over this way. I just wanted this upper part to be darker because that's another problem with faces. If you're going to take a photo of a relative, make sure you play, take it in the sun so you can get good darks and lights on there because it's the shape of the lights, the shape of the darks that make the person look like the person. It's the shape of the lights and the shape of the darks that make the person look like the person. Otherwise, it's going to look like somebody else. If the if the lights and darks on their face aren't accurate. Okay, so let's do the tie. We're not going to get fussy with the tie and try to make it look, uh, I don't want it to be too bright because it's getting too bright. So I'm just putting a little, <laughs> took some of the orange and put it right in that blue. This is making a really hard edge right here. And it's looking like you're supposed to look there. And we don't want anybody to look there. We want them to look at the face. So we want to keep these edges pretty soft along here because your eye sees hard edges first. And it sees soft edges second. Actually sees pattern pattern first before um, before it ever sees color. And see how this goes straight down? That's really powerful. It's taking our eye off the page just because it's a straight line, almost too hard. So we're going to make a little wrinkle here. Does that look better? And then because it is a bluish tie, we do need to add a little bluish at the top. And we're putting, I'm just putting plain Eltering blue right over this grayish color because uh, this gray color underneath will automatically 
show through and dull the color or dull the tie color at the top up there. Well, I say he looks like a well dressed gentleman. Let me see what else I can do. This looks kind of puffy over here for some reason. And I think it's because there's too much contrast between here and here on the sunny side. I think it's okay over here, but it's probably too much over here. So let's just blend this in a little bit. So I'm just making it gray. It's a kind of a gray flannel suit. I'm not sure what pattern, what you call that pattern? What is that, herringbone or something? I, I don't know. Okay, so there's there's my bluish gray. All I really care about is is uh, making this lapel lie down. It's, it's kind of floating. Off the off the yeah, off the rest of the suit. Can't have that. And this this side doesn't look so good either. I'm gonna put some. It actually has a, a see right in here. See this line right in here. It's very has soft edges. This shadow, which is shadow on the other side of this. Where it folds over, we need, we really need that shadow. So I'll put that in, and it's over here. It's not next to the edge, and over here. So just like this, soften the edge, soften the edge over here, and because the edge is too soft. Oh, to put that back in again. I got it too too much softening. Oh, I had a lot of water on my brush, so that's what does it. Okay, here we go. Right down from here. Well, it didn't come down that far. So I'm just looking at my pattern. It doesn't come down all the way to here. See that? It just comes this little spot right in here. So let's get rid of this. I'm just spread it over here, like so. I'm going to get this to lie down. So I'll just come over here like I did on the other one, the other side. And there, that looks, that looks pretty good. I'm just making it a little darker in here. Then I'm going to put it further down because it looks like it's coming to a dead end. And that, that pole could sh show a shadow over here. You know, sometimes you just have to say, okay, the painting needs this. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up here just because it looks like it's coming to a dead end, okay. All right, this is a shadow from his chin that, chin that comes across this way. And it's quite dark back in here. We could even darken it a little more. I feel, I, you know, I want to get, Got to be careful I don't get too fussy, right? This brush, it does cool things like this. You're just gonna just follow that tip. Some nice brushes don't behave perfectly. But his shirt, you know, his suit looks like a suit. His tie is a little wonky. All right, we can take our Skoda, and we can just make a little line right here that looks like that's where the tie is. And because it was already wet, it doesn't have hard edges. So I like that. And I feel like this man, Schindler, he feels like he's uh, a person. And he feels like he's human. <laughs> so that was our goal is to make, make something that was human. 
And um, I think I'm going to put this shadow in a little more right here. I think that helped. It was wet. So it's spread out. It doesn't look bad. You know, I'm looking at him and I see this mouth and it tips up right here a little more. And so I think that we need that because I don't, he, it's, okay, see how it has this flat area that comes across here and then it goes down. It needs that flat area because he's just a little too pretty. He's got, his lips aren't really that thick. Let's see if that makes a difference. That doesn't seem to be getting worse. Oh well. But he still looks human. That's the main thing, right? Okay, so he's looking human. <laughs> and we might be able to make him look more like, you know, it's just everything you do is an experiment, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is mix up some black and just see if I can't put his mouth in where it really is, which is thinner up in here. He's, his lips are not that thick. And when it comes out here, and it, I'm, I'm just looking at the photo here. Comes up this way. And if he didn't have quite, it wasn't quite so dark. We put that in when it was uh, wet, so it ran a little too far. It's just kind of fun to play around with them and see what happens because. This is not my photo, of course. I mean, there's a point after a certain amount of time where it's no longer copyrighted, but I'm not taking a chance. I don't know what that time is. Well, he has a lot of sass, I swear. I mean, look at this guy. Isn't he sassy? And I think what's wrecking everything is not that it's totally wrecked. Is this is just too light right out here? Oh, you just you're just so suave. But you now he saved all those Jews and now he's righteous among the nations. So boy, everybody's a sinner, isn't the true gosh. Oh um, no one's perfect. If you read the Bible, you see that no one is perfect. Oh no, see, it's getting really fussy, so we have to, we better quit. Okay, there we are. We have Oscar. See, this is really getting to be a very defined line, which is not good. So let's just get rid of some of this line and call it call it better. Let's see if that looks better. Not much. Okay, so let's see. Let's get out one of these more scrubbing type brushes. So this is an old stiff oil painting brush. I'll just take out some of this color. Yeah, this looks better already. 
And of course, pretty soon it's gonna look like a big splotch. So um, I think that's enough messing around. <laughs> really. Yeah, I kind of like the looks of them, really. It feels like it needs something. I think I, I think I know what it needs. Okay. I mean, a face is very complicated, really. Uh, unless you do it a certain way. Oh gosh, I wish we could spend a lot of time on faces. They're really fun. Okay. Yeah, that looks better. That helps take his ear out of his office head instead of like part of sticking onto his cheek too tight. And then he's got more spots down here on his face, like from his hair, or it's a mole or something. I don't know. I'm just say it's uh, the way you shaved that day. Well, I think it looks okay. You know? I particularly like that. I think he needs more red, red in his ear. Let's put some red in there. <laughs> okay, let's just do the whole ear red. Yeah, that's better. Now let's do some red down here too. That'll set his ear back off his face. Yeah, it kind of sits back now better, doesn't it? Because it's not, it's not supposed to come forward. It's midway back on his face. Okay. I can see that it's very narrow right in here. So let's just add a little more. I, I could see I drew it on, but um, I didn't paint it yet. So let's mix up some orange and red. Now this is orange and red. I think there's a little touch of blue in there. I'll just put this right here. Oh, that just, that just did it, didn't it? This is dark down in really dark right there. Okay. Oh, I, I really like the look on his face now. <laughs> he looks like a person of importance. He doesn't have too fancy of a jacket and, and a shirt on. These are probably lines that are way too hard. Let's let's just see what we affect what we can affect by softening something. They're too uniform. They're too much the same value, and the same color. Gosh, you know. I'm not perfect here <laughs> at all. But just, I don't know, it's really fun to paint people, try to make them look like they really look. But it can be um, daunting if somebody asks you to do it. Oh, can you do a portrait of me? I say, well, I can try. <laughs> I can try, but I'm not guaranteeing anything. See, look at the shadow that's under here. We totally missed it. And that's what it needs. It needs some shadow under there. So let's go ahead and put that in. Just grabbing any old brush here. And we'll make this shadow come here like this. Okay, there we are. And this needs more shadow over here. Then this won't look so funny. On this side, of course, there's more shadow here. Is this is being shadowed by the tie. I'm putting a little, I'm making more purple shadow here, <clears throat> and more purple shadow here. I guess, I guess the trick is just to make it try to look as natural as possible. Is it easy? Ah. Whoops. <laughs> so I'm looking at this, see how this looks out. Oh. 
get back. I think just mark this up. <laughs> oh. Okay, then we have Oscar. The more you do, the better you get, the more things you observe. So just keep painting and keep doing it. And uh, pretty soon you'll have it down. And Friday, we're going to talk about contour drawing. So make sure you remind me if I don't mention contour drawing. And we will contour draw or else. It's such an important concept that uh, contour drawing is. So that little bit of shadow right here to define is because it, it's going to cast a shadow, you know that. Along there, right over here too. Yeah, I like that back better. It goes from thick to thin over here. See this? It's not all the same width. Okay, Arthur, or Oscar, I'm gonna always want to call him Oscar. Now see this hard edge back here? If this were softer, it would make the light look like it's coming around here, like it does here. And wouldn't that look great? So let's just soften this edge and see if we can make that look better, just because it's fun, for one thing. Let's just see if we can do this. Make that have a soft edge. Maybe go back into the background a bit. That doesn't look better. Oh, it looks so much better, doesn't it? Look at this. What a difference. Just a soft edge. So you get this light into light, light into the light side of the hat, dark into the dark side of the hat. And this also could use more blending. So I'm just blabbing on and on, but this is important. <laughs> so. Let's just make this match values a little more right in here. Let's see if we can get it placed there where it goes dark in the dark. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, see how it disappears right here? I guess that's what gives it an air of mystery. It gives the guy a more or less um, I don't know, mysterious look, I guess is the word. So what else do I want to do here? It feels, feels like it needs something. I think it needs this shadow better. Right in here, it kind of, we lost it. I think it just needs this shadow to come back. There we go. I don't know why this hat looks so tall, but I guess it is a tall hat. I think it maybe it's because it's because this dark comes over too far. But I don't know. People are gonna look at his face, not his hat, you know. So we'll just make I know what it needs. It needs a little uh, see up here, it kind of goes around this way. And that's what we don't have. We don't have that look like it goes around the edge very well. So we'll just lift that out. Let's see if that makes a difference. <laughs> Not much. Okay, we're going to bring this brown, brownie yellow color over here. Yeah, I'm painting with an oil, oil painting brush, but whatever. You can paint with an oil painting brush if you want. So I'm mixing up kind of a yellowy brown this time. I think that maybe helped. I think it needed to go around the corner some. So I'm just using, I'm using um, Hansa as a, as a hue. So I'm just putting it on there very thick, pretty thick, and making it thick because I want it to come off this background. 
meaning stand off the background because there's a contrast. So it's doing that a little bit. I think it's okay. <laughs> all right, let's call it uh, call it good, everyone. And I'll make this as a movie. And now I'll pause or turn off the recording. And I think that means stop recording right there. So let's let, let's just wait, review for a sec here. We've got Oscar looking handsome. She's got a dapper looking suit on. What is that? Oh, it's, <laughs> never mind. It was something on the screen because <laughs> this is actually Ron's computer and he uses it when he paints. So he, he's got some splashes on there, which is fine. And here's, here's Dorothy. She has a nice soft look. I think she's, I think I need to work on her maybe a little more because I think, I think I got her too, too tight in here. It feels too, too tight in here. I think it's, I think what it is, is I think she needs, let's see here, she needs some gums. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to give her some gums. Just a little bit of down. So I've got some dark orange here. It's kind of a reddish brown. So I'll just bring this down here. Her teeth are too big. That's what it is. I'll bring this down here. And bring this over here like this. And she still feels like these teeth are too bright. Like, better be careful. But you know, it just feels like she needs it not quite so bright over here. So I'm going to darken these teeth. I think that helped. And then this reddish color I'll put over here so she's going to have a tooth here. And then she's going to have a tooth right back here. I'm just, I'm just bringing that little piece down this between your teeth and a little gum, a little bit of gum right here. And then it feels just too um hard right here so i'm going to just soften this edge right here where her the shadow meets her tooth right there it just feels too too strong okay good enough And this feels like it needs to come out a little more to give her a wider smile, possibly. There, amazing what you can do to give an attitude change, isn't it? <laughs> she looks like a more fun-loving person there. Oh, let's see, Dorothy, what else do you need? You need some more dark or something around your eyes, I think. Feels like this, uh, I don't know if we're coming back to it, but we are we're coming back to it. Let's see, what do I have? I don't want to go too too long here and more of one to tears. It just has, it's just so dark here. It just feels like it needs some more color that goes out over into her hair in here. Put that dark in there, just slash it in there. And some more eyelash or shadow over here. And let's quit before we ruin Dorothy. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to get some, just a little more definition right in here. Oh yeah, that helped. She just keeps getting prettier. Isn't she? This definitely, I don't know, there's something bugging me about this eye. I think it's, it needs more, it's more shadow over here. Feels like it's too, um, coming out too far. Let's, let's do this. See how this comes down here like this? Just feels like it needs to darken up some and darken around here some. Orange. Sometimes it just helps just to blur things some, and this is too hard of a line, so we'll just soften it. <clears throat> and this side <clears throat> over here <clears throat> looks a little, <laughs> I think it needs, it looks a little huge, I think. So I think we need to, Bring this in more. <clears throat> Bring in more. Oh, that seemed to help. Bring in more. <clears throat> And this is your good eye. So it looks like it doesn't have any color at all. This feels like it needs more color in here. So just add some pink from here over. Okay, well, I think we're done with this. Um, I can see that the more we do this, the better we would get. And I think I, I still think I'm going to soften this. I'm, so the way I'm going to soften it is do it the easy way. Just add a little bit of very thin right in here. And that will soften that line. So it's not quite so hard. Looks like I could use a little more orange right here. Yeah, it looks softer. So I kind of went from dark to medium to light. So dark to medium to light. So dark to medium to light. And didn't want to go too fast on that. And here's a funny line right here under her nose. Felt like it wasn't blending very well. Anyway, have fun with these. I think I just love painting people. I just think it's a wonderful thing. And 
you know, you can just get involved into making it, making a face. They say don't paint your relatives. So I, I just got this off of, of Pinterest. Actually, I just put in these. I put in Arthur Schindler. I brought up Dorothy. So Oscar Schindler, rather. Sorry. Let's see if we've got her soft enough going dark into dark and light into light. Yeah, I think so. I think that look, I think she looks pretty good. Not too harsh. We can maybe put in another color. Like we could repeat some of this flesh tone back in here, maybe. And she's got a lot of yellow. So let's put in another yellow just for fun in the background. I like this soft yellow. I was using this brush. This is a really nice flat brush. What is it? It's a Winsor Newton number 19 millimeters, it says. So it's a three quarter inch flat Winsor Newton sable brush. It wasn't co didn't cost too much. One stroke, it's called. Anyway, it's just a Lovely brush, carries lots of water, comes highly recommended over. Here. So let's, uh, yeah, so we're gonna put some, put some uh, yellows over here. Let's put it, make it a little different color. Let's put some red, red in here. I don't see any red. There's some red. Every painting needs some red. And if there's red in the foreground, put it in the background. You're supposed to repeat your colors throughout the area. I mean, go ahead and do that. It's okay. Let's put some purple back here too. <laughs> I'm just having too much fun. Sorry. Let's soften this edge. I kind of like the repetition of this yellow over here. I think it helps. Okay, that was fun and. Um, We'll just quit recording now, and you can watch the movie anytime you want. And so I hope I didn't already stop recording. I